Now let's return to these engines that we've got for generating beat patterns. Um, now this is perfectly functional and it was a good way to introduce Max and some of its functionality in terms of how messages are sent um, through various objects and, uh, and what the various objects do. However, we're a bit beyond that now and this is now a little bit cumbersome. So let's find another object which Max provides which can, and in fact there's various different ways of doing this, but we'll introduce one in particular that will allow us to produce a kind of a grid patterns of uh, beats that, will, uh, that we can use in conjunction with our uh, new drum players. Uh, and the object I want to introduce is um, live grid. And when it comes up, it looks like this. And obviously you can have a look in the help file to figure out what that does. Which, you know. Now I'm going to simplify this a little because there's functionality here that we don't need. If you want to investigate that more, then you can obviously do, do that on your own. Um, <clears throat> but for our purposes in this patch, what we want is a kind of matrix that gives us three rows to replace these three engines here and then 16 columns because we have a counter that counts from 1 to 16. By the way, I think before I've suggested that you use your counter going from 0 to 15, I've gone from 1 to 16 here because that's what this particular object understands. Um, so uh, we can go into the objects inspector window um, and somewhere down here it asks us how many columns we want and how many rows. Well, we want uh, 16 columns, so we'll leave that as it is, but we only want three rows. Uh, so we do that and it uh, most of them disappear. We don't need this sequence of buttons down here. Um, this, by the way, for when you explore things later, um, if I lock the patch, you click on, oops, uh, you click on them and they give you a reverse kind of play um, object. So basically this is for sample uh, kind of grid processing uh, or sample fragmenting uh, according to a beat and then you can reverse some of those beats or turn them off altogether. We're not looking at that right now. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, row of those icons and uh, let's see where do we turn that off. Display directions panel. So it's that one we need to turn off. So I'm going to get rid of that. And one more thing we need to do is that, as you saw in the uh, help file, as I click on these, only one row within a column can be um, highlighted. And we want more than one to happen at the same time as we have with these. So we, want, we might want more than one instrument uh, to be playing at the same time. So this top one would be bass, the next one would be the snare, the next one would be the cymbal. We want more than one instrument to be able to play at the same time. So to do that, I go back into the inspector window and I click on matrix mode and that will allow us to, to do that. By the way, I'm going to get rid of this um, black, solid black line down here because I want it, with all of them, I want the first, the fourth, the uh, eighth and the twelfth beat to be uh, blackened. Uh, so how do I do that? I want the column marker to be on every fourth. I want the row marker to be... What do I want? Do I want it on zero? Yes, I want it on zero, so that gets rid of all of those. And I think that's all we need for the inspector window, so I will get rid of that. So we now have um, something which should ultimately be able to replace all of this, uh, as far as it's got 16 beats and it's got three rows for the three instruments that we've got. So I can now connect this to uh, our matrix <clears throat> and I'm going to populate each of these squares according to the beat pattern that I've put down here and we'll see what it outputs when we send data from it. So I'm going to send the output, the left-hand output of that into a message box. Obviously it's been connected to counter on the other side. Um, and I'm going to turn this down because it's going to do my heading. But suffice it to say it's reading through that data. Now look what's happening. So what it's doing, if you can see, is it's reporting which of those rows are being activated for each beat. 
And so it's sending a number whenever one is whenever the top row is uh, being hit, then it sends a one. Whenever the second row is being hit, then it sends a two. Whenever the third one is hit, it sends a three. And you'll notice that sometimes more than one row is being hit at the same time, so it sends out two numbers as a list. Maybe I should slow this down so that it's easier to see what's going on. There we go. Notice that when there's nothing happening, we get a zero. But then when there are two things happening, then we have those things uh, represented as uh, a list. But even when there are two numbers happening at the same time, I still want them to come out separately. So I'm going to use this iter object to separate those numbers out. That's going to seem pointless, I suppose. Uh, but why do I want to do that? Well, because I want to uh, now somehow distribute those messages. So when you get a 1, I want to send it to this drum player object. When we get a 2, I want to send it to this drum player object. And when we get a 3, I want to send it to this one. If they were coming out as a list, then that wouldn't work. So they had to be coming out as separate messages. Um, but at this point, all we need is a very familiar object, which is the select object. And we say 1, 2, and 3, so that when select object receives a 1, we send it to this drum player object, then it gets a 2, sends it to this one, then we get a 3, we send it to this one. That should mean that all of this stuff now is surplus to requirement. So I'm going to get rid of all of it and hope that it works, otherwise I'll have to make it all again. So now, turn this up again, and, and it's working just as we wanted it to. So that has simplified <coughs> this whole process considerably. It's made it a great deal more attractive to look at. And if I wanted to, obviously, for, for coding, for the, for the uh, aesthetics of coding, I could put these all alongside each other, like that. Actually, extend that a little bit. You can get a bit overzealous when it comes to tidying up your patch. But that, I think you'll agree, is considerably tidier than what we had first of all. Ah, except that I've made a mistake. Um, uh, what you might have noticed is that if I play it back, Uh, we've got the crash on uh, what I thought was column one, uh, sorry, row one, it's not, it's the other way around. So row one is at the bottom, row two, row three. Uh, so we'll have to just change the select uh, numbers around. I think it sounded nicer before, but anyway. 